Everyone thinks they have a go-to-market strategy. Trust me, when I got started in the SaaS game, I did too. But here's the thing, I meet so many founders, this has happened to me as well, where we executed on that go-to-market strategy. Months passed only to realize we had the wrong one. Ever since then, I've sworn to make sure we don't waste a minute on the wrong go-to-market strategy whenever I'm growing a SaaS business. I've learned as an engineer that you have to take a data-backed approach to running your go-to-market strategy so that you actually know what's working, what's not, and what do you tweak. So in this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the three steps that I follow to actually build a go-to-market strategy, execute on it, look at the right data, and then scale it. And when you implement these three steps that I've been using over and over and over, you too will be able to accelerate your path to the next stage of growth. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I drop an episode every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So if you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon that way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK Energy. Now, if you're already part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching program, you're part of this community. We're just now hitting close to 71,000 subscribers. But people, welcome back. It's really awesome to see you over here. When I first got started in the SaaS game, I was an engineer. I still am an engineer. I run two SaaS companies. I coach over, at this point, this is my fifth year of coaching and I've coached over 500 founders in my go-to-market programs. But when I first got started, I had to read every single marketing book that was out there, every single sales book that was out there because I knew that no good marketer or salesperson would join my little company because it wasn't fully proven yet, even if I had great investors, which I did. So I started learning all the pieces. I started to embrace founder-led go-to market and then I would put into play and then crickets nothing would actually work and the worst worst part of that was I really didn't know what was broken I tried LinkedIn I tried outbound and then nothing and I meet founders so often that say the same thing they're like look it just didn't work but I know it should work because it's working for other people and that's when I really learned from some key mentors that you got to follow a data backed approach you have to have a thesis you have to execute on it you have to look at the numbers and you have to figure out what's working what's not and make that shift Fast forward to today, for every single SaaS founder that I coach, for every single SaaS company that I personally scale, that I own, I follow a data-backed approach that I'm gonna teach you in this video. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's dig right into it. All right, the first step in this three-step framework that I follow to scale SaaS companies with a go-to-market strategy and with a data-backed approach is to make sure that I actually have a strategy. Why do I highlight this? Because for me, when I first got started, and so many founders I come across today have a go-to-market strategy in their head, and what they're really doing is skipping over that part and jumping to execution, which is step number two. And there's actually a nuanced way to execute for step number two, but we won't jump ahead. The point is, you need to make sure you have a few things written out in the right way, and you've made distinct choices so that you actually have a proper go-to-market strategy. The first piece that you actually need to have written out is your ideal customer profile. We call this an ICP. An ideal customer profile defines specifically the type of customer that you want to be targeting in your go-to-market strategy. This is a specific segment of the market. This is a specific type of customer. A lot of times people confuse the total addressable market, which is anyone and everyone that could potentially eventually buy your product by the time you're IPOing versus your ideal customer profile to get to that next stage of growth. So let's just say you're at a million and you wanna to get to three million, who are the customers more likely to buy for the next three million dollars of business for your recurring revenue? When you wanna to get to that, that should go into your ICP. Whenever I work with founders, we go through a 29 point process to actually flesh out an ICP. The reason we do this is actually forces us to make proper decisions on where can we differentiate ourselves, where can we play from the competition, and where can we win. And this is why so many companies that have a proper ICP are more likely to succeed. Once you have your ICP, the second component you need for your go-to-market strategy that I make sure I do for every single company that I work with is a proper manifesto. 
A manifesto is essentially a positioning document. It is your messaging. It is how you communicate to the market what you guys do, why you're different than your competition, and why your ideal customers need to take action now. When you actually do those three pieces crafted in a proper strategic narrative, that's a manifesto. And that is the thing that really defines how you're gonna compete in the market and communicate to your ideal customers why they should go with you versus doing nothing, which is usually the competition, or an actual competitor that exists in the market. These are two key things that you wanna make sure you define as part of your go-to-market strategy. So before you think about the data, before you think about executing, before you run that cold email or that LinkedIn post or that Twitter or that TikTok video, which does work in some markets, you wanna make sure you have a proper go-to-market strategy. That's step number one. Once you are armed with a proper go-to-market strategy, then comes the actual execution piece. But here's a common pitfall. What tends to happen is founders will say, look, I wanna go after these three different ICPs and I wanna turn on LinkedIn, I wanna do blogging, I wanna do TikTok and Twitter and I wanna run ads. Can I do that? And I said, look, you can do whatever you want. There's about a million tasks associated with each ICP and each channel. So if you wanna do five ICPs and five channels, five times five times a million is how many tasks you'll have, go for it. And usually founders then realize, okay, you know what? We should probably pick and maybe we should test this. And I'm like, great idea. Heart of coaching, this is my fifth year of coaching. I realized this, it's less about telling you what to do. You're smart, I'm smart, we're all smart. But it's really about asking the highest quality questions that helps us understand what the next step is. And what I found is this is what founders value the most, this is what I value the most, and that is what reduces execution risk. And that's the power in all of this. And the second step is not not full-blown execution, the second step is GTM testing. That's the second test that we do. And typically what we do, there's two key steps that we do for this. The first step is we turn this manifesto, which is our strategic narrative, into a proper lead magnet. A lead magnet is essentially something you can offer out there in exchange for an email address so that people are like, yeah, I want that guide or I want that checklist or whatever it may be so that they can get more information. That is super important because at the end of the day, we want leads that we can turn into revenue. And when we generate leads, we know that there's interest in the market. The second thing that we actually want to do is pick one channel. Typically, there's one channel, channel meaning how you can get to your customers. There's one channel that is the best for your ICP. For every single founder that I coach, for every single SaaS company that I scale, the channel can be different. It could be blogging, it could be LinkedIn, it could be Twitter, it could be TikTok, it could be ads because they just don't go on social network. It could be any number of these things. So it's really important to pick one channel because every channel requires some level of mastery and you're better off picking one channel that is the best one for your ideal customers where you can actually bring your message to them. These are the two key pieces that you need because what this allows us to do is get focused instead of going scatterbrained, just a million tasks instead of five million tasks and allows us for us to say, okay, let's go test this go-to-market strategy in the market and see how people react. This is the power of actually making sure that you test it with the right data. Now, you might be wondering, TK, what's the data that I collect? That's a good question, let's get into that. There's some specific pieces of data that we architect and we measure when we're doing this testing. The first thing we look at is engagement. So let's just say you're doing LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. Let's just say you're targeting VPs of sales. They're all on LinkedIn, so I wanna go on LinkedIn. I wanna make sure that I post content on LinkedIn and I wanna make sure I provide value and I wanna make sure that at the end of that, I want leads, not just likes. I actually provide for a link to my lead magnet. This does two things. One, it helps me engage with my ideal customers. And two, it gets my message out there. And three, it helps me acquire actual leads instead of just a bunch of likes, which is never gonna turn into revenue, not in the short term, not in the time we have to actually prove out this business and start scaling. So. The first thing I measure once I post and offer the lead magnet is the engagement. Are people looking at it? Are they liking at it? Are they commenting? Are they clicking on the link to get the lead magnet? This is super powerful. The second thing I look at is the landing page conversion rate. So typically with the lead magnet, you set up a landing page. 
That way, when you post the content, you say, hey, to grab a copy of my guide, click on the link below, you click on the link below, and they go to the landing page and they have to put it in their email. So one of the biggest things I wanna look at is what percentage of people are looking at that guide and the messaging that we have and the positioning that we have and the manifesto that we built and say, yeah, I want a copy of that. The successful companies that I coach and the companies that I run see anywhere from 30 to 60% conversion rate over here. And that's a good benchmark to know that you're on the right track with your go-to-market messaging. That's super powerful. The third thing that I look at is the fit percentage. The fit percentage is, let's just say we generate 100 leads. That's awesome. But what I really wanna understand is what percentage of those leads are actually a fit for us, meaning they're ICP leads. Because believe it or not, there's an army of people out there on the internet who have nothing better to do than go through forms and sign up for freebies. It is the absolute worst. So when you actually tighten this the right way, you structure the messaging the right way, you should at least get 60 to 80% of people becoming fit leads. So what you wanna measure for is, okay, we got 100 leads, what percentage of them are actually in our ideal customer profile? Because that will give you a signal on if your messaging is attracting the right people into your pipeline. The last thing that I measure is consumption. So just because someone looks at a post and likes it doesn't mean anything. That's why we want actual leads. Just because someone goes to a landing page but they don't convert doesn't mean anything. That's why we want conversion. Just because someone becomes a lead, we wanna make sure it's a fit lead. It's actually in our ideal customer profile. So we measure that. The last thing is just because someone becomes a lead doesn't mean they actually engage with your content and end up buying. So I always wanna measure consumption. So when I work with founders, whenever I build these out, we always make sure we use a certain software tool that measures the actual consumption of our lead magnet and how far down and how much time they spend with our content because that's a proxy of us understanding if the messaging we're putting out there is actually resonating with our ideal customers. So there's two things I look at. The first thing I look at is activation percentage. The second thing I look at is revenue percentage, meaning what percentage of people actually said, hey, I wanna learn more after they became a lead, after consuming the content and spending time with it. And the other one is how many of them actually ended up buying down the line, whether it's a long sales cycle or a self-service SaaS product where they convert pretty quickly. Either way, I actually wanna look at that data. To zoom out a little bit, the biggest thing we're doing here is before we actually start executing on everything, we start to say, what's our go-to-market strategy? Then we say, cool, let's go test it because it could be wrong or it could be right. And we don't just put it out there, we do it in a certain way where we collect the right data. And as we look at the data, we look at engagement. Do we have engagement? Okay, great. Do we have conversions to leads? Okay, great. Do we have fit? Are they quality leads? Okay, great. Are they consuming the content and taking the next step? Okay, awesome. What this does is it allows us to understand where in the process things are breaking down. Is it that we're just not reaching our ideal customers? Is it that our messaging is off? Is it that it's not converting? What part in this entire process is the messaging breaking down? We get all of this data and it's very easy to parse at that point and understand what's working and what's not and what do we tweak? Then comes the third part. Now, before I go into the third part, let me just pause here for a second. Are you starting to see the power in this? Are you starting to see the power of actually building out a go-to-market strategy before you jump to execution? Are you starting to see the power of actually testing that go-to-market strategy before you scale it out across 5 million tasks? And are you starting to see the power of collecting the right data so that you can actually take a data-backed approach for your go-to-market strategy and understand what's working, what's not, and what do I need to tweak? If you are starting to see the power in this, can I just get a yes in the comments below? And also, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It just loves it when you do that. And also, if you're in the stage where you're like, TK, I don't even know if I have the right ICP. I have five ICPs and I need to pick one. Or I thought I had an ICP and I kind of set it in my head, but I don't even have the right messaging for that ICP. Or if you're thinking about how do I actually set up the landing page and turn into a lead magnet and look at all this data? How do I actually like parse the data? This is why I created my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Inside of this program, this is my fifth year running this program. I've worked with over 250 founders in this program and over 500 founders across all the different engagements that I have. Out of all of that, we've got an incredible success and I've really honed in this process on how to build a go-to-market strategy, test it and scale it. So if you'd like to work together and you want help in implementing all of this, I encourage you to check out my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. You don't have to go anywhere right now. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this episode. I'll also link to it below. Let's go to step number three where all this comes together, where the scale really happens. Also, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already because honestly, it's for the YouTube algorithm, and honestly, we put a lot of love into these videos, and we just love to see it as well. So smash that like button. All right, step number three, finally, is go-to-market scaling. Now, 
couple of things are happening. Think about this approach, the way you've set yourself up for success. You start with a strategy instead of just having it in your head. Then you said, cool, let's go test it. And you have all this data and you've probably iterated on the things. So one of my most favorite things is when I meet with founders and have all this data and we look at it together and say, okay, cool. What do we know? What's working? What's not? And what do we tweak? And that's one of the best parts because we're coming from a place of certainty, coming from a place of conviction. We feel control in the entire process and that completely changes the game on how we actually scale companies instead of just guessing, well, I hope this works. So let's just send out 10,000 cold emails and we'll get something on the other end. If you're starting to see the power in this, like I, this is why I get excited about that stuff. But think of how you set yourself up. Now you have data. Now you know something's working. So you're approaching this next step of scale with certainty. So this is where all these other pieces come together. Now you can hire some people. You could hire an agency because agencies are very good at actually executing. So if you tell me, this is my go-to-market strategy. Here's the messaging that's working. Here's my ideal customer. I want you to scale it. I want you to turn on ads or I want you to do more of this. That's super powerful. Agencies are perfect for this stage. For the strategy piece and the testing piece, you're better off owning it. Founder led GTM always wins. Whatever you do, don't hire a fractional CMO because they can't get a real CMO job and they'll actually slow you down at this point and actually find a way to screw this up even though you did all the right things. So you can always hire an agency, you can hire a marketer. And by the way, when you actually go into recruiting a marketer for this, you're gonna go at it with so much conviction and they're gonna see it and you're gonna be able to attract better talent because they're gonna be like, oh my God, they really have their stuff together. I can totally make this better. But as soon as you go to them and you say like, I don't know, Maybe you can sell and market this for me because I can't figure it out. You're not gonna get the great marketers because they don't wanna risk their career with you that's unproven. They can just go to a much better company with a lot more traction. This puts you in a great position where you can actually hire people to continue to scale. What you can also do is turn on more channels. So now that you know the messaging is working, you can go to more channels and say, look, I wanna turn on LinkedIn, I wanna turn on Twitter, I wanna turn on Facebook, I wanna turn on Instagram, I wanna turn on PPC, any number of these things because you know this messaging and this ICP really resonates. You also know as you turn on more of these pieces, exactly what data to continue to look at so you can hold yourself accountable and know what's working, what's not as you continue to scale. And the last piece that's super powerful, and this is one of my most favorite things as companies really start to see this in full fruition is beast mode. Beast mode is this idea of you're in every channel. No matter where your ideal customers are going, you're there. You're retargeting them, you're at the events, everywhere. Because you know this messaging works and every single time you put the messaging in front of your ideal customers, they're gonna become customers. That's when you can actually turn on beast mode and that's when true scale happens. So that's how I follow a data-backed approach to actually scale SaaS companies. So let's recap. Number one, you wanna make sure you have a proper go-to-market strategy. So don't just have it in your head, you wanna write it down, you wanna do it the right way. You wanna make sure you have a proper ideal customer profile. Everyone thinks they have one until they work with me. I follow a 29 point process to make sure you have the right ideal customer profile. The second thing is you wanna pick one ICP. Don't pick five because you just don't have the bandwidth for that. Sometimes it's really hard to pick and that's where a lot of my coaching sessions go to understand, okay, out of these ICPs, what's the best one to go? How do we pick the right one? What are the quantitative and qualitative ways to do this? That's what strategy work is really about. Strategy work is all about making choices. The second thing is you wanna make sure you have a proper manifesto. This is your positioning, it's your messaging, it's how you communicate into the market your actual unique value proposition compared to any of the competition, whether it's doing nothing or an actual competitor that exists. Once you have your strategy, then don't just turn everything on, actually turn on testing. You wanna turn your manifesto to a lead magnet, you wanna set up the funnel, and you wanna make sure you pick one channel where you start promoting it with the right content and driving for leads. Once you have that set up and you're running it, you wanna check for engagement, the landing page conversion rates, fit percentage to make sure you're getting the right quality leads, and then actual consumption. Are they activating? Are they converting to revenue? Once those pieces are working, then you can say, all right, let's go to the third step and really scale this out. You can turn on more channels. You can turn on beast mode. You can even hire an agency or hire more people to say, hey, this works. Here's the data I'm gonna measure you on. Go at it. And if it works, then great. If it doesn't work, you'll know very early instead of guessing and wasting 18 months on a fractional CMO that can't get a real job anywhere. Just kidding. Those are the three steps. Now, you may be wondering, all right, TK, how do I actually put all this into play? How do I actually build out my ideal customer profile? What's a manifesto? What's my positioning? What's my messaging? How do I actually differentiate myself from the rest of the market? Well, maybe you're also dealing with long sales cycles. You're like, look, I need to introduce urgency in this. 
All of this is go-to-market strategy work. You may also be wondering, how do I actually build out the lead magnet from the manifesto? How do I set up the landing page? How do I get a high conversion rate? How do I instrument this data? What software tools should I use? And also, how do I turn on beast mode? This is why I created my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. It is an incredible program. It is my fifth year running this program. It's after me being in the SaaS industry for nearly 15 years after multiple exits, I started this program and I've worked with over 250 founders inside of this program specifically for scaling. If you wanna to work together, you just need to go to tkkater.com slash GTM. tkkater.com slash GTM. Specifically, inside of the program, we work on three things. The first thing we work on is building out your ideal customer profile. Your ideal customer profile is specifically focusing on how do I go from my current revenue stage to that next stage of growth, and what do my ideal customers look like, and how do I create that into a proper profile? Once you have your ICP and you've made the right choices, and I'll guide you through the whole thing, we then build out your manifesto. Your manifesto is your messaging, it's your positioning, it's how you differentiate yourself in the market, it's how you attract your ideal customers. Once you have those two pieces, you have your go-to-market strategy. Then comes your Broadway show. Your Broadway show is a consistent set of sales and marketing activities that you run to bring your messaging to your ICP on a consistent basis. And just like I showed you in this video, I'll teach you how to collect the right data, choose the right system so you can actually start to test it and then scale it out as you start to get success. And for each step of the way, I'll be with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that we're looking at the data and we're iterating. And also at this point, with me five years of doing this, I get pattern recognition across all the companies I work with, which is kind of cool because I'm able to work with you. Not only am I able to tap into my own experience in scaling and exiting SaaS companies, I now have the experience of coaching so many founders and seeing so many companies and their success. So I'm able to really coach you and make sure we reduce your execution risk. The better the fit, the better the results. If you'd like to work together, just go to tkkater.com slash GTM. Over there, you'll get all the details on how the program works. If you'd like to work together, just fill out a little form and you'll book a call. On the call, we'll figure out where you are in your business, what you're struggling with, and if it's a fit, we'll be off to the races right away. It is an incredible program. Founders that join the program are able to revamp their go-to-market strategy and put it into play within the first three weeks of joining. And then using the data, we're able to look at what's working, what's not, and iterate and scale. It is an incredible program, so just go to tkkater.com slash GTM. If you got value from this video, which hopefully you did if you're still watching, please be sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It just loves it when you do that. If you have a fellow founder, if you have a team member, if you're part of a WhatsApp group or a Slack group of other SaaS founders, please share this video with them. We wanna help as many founders as possible embrace founder at GTM, build successful go-to-market strategies and scale their SaaS companies and build incredible SaaS companies. So please share this with them. Also, I drop an episode every single Sunday with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon where you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours, it's gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK and I'll see you in the next episode or inside the SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Take care, everybody. Where in the, what part, ooh, <laughs> let's read that. Is this recording? It is. Okay, thank God.